Alex Hole Chuddy, arguably one of the legends of our current starting 11. For how long, you ask? Well, that is a question, isn't it? Last episode, and throughout the summer, I emphasised the need to get £150,000 for him. You might have noticed on his profile he had a bid on him. Middlesbrough have made an offer of £500,000. The board have accepted this. Brian, I don't really blame him, has said, yeah, we're taking that money. £500,000 for this guy is silly, isn't it? But you know what's sillier? The fact that I've just negotiated with Portsmouth to sell him for £700,000. Both these deals feature me loaning him back for the year. Both these deals feature me getting a 50% profit of sale. And now it's all on a whole chuddy to choose his destiny. Middlesbrough or Portsmouth. One of these deals gets me £200,000 more than the other. Sadly, the lower offer, I can't negotiate because the chairman accepted it. Welcome back to Part to Prem. We're about to sell our a-hole. How much is he going to go for? We'll find out after the intro. Let's do this. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem here with Rugby Town. We are in the Vanarama National League. Last episode, Christmas special. Three matches live. We searched for a centre defensive mid. I found a centre defensive mid. And I signed a centre defensive mid. Rio Shipston has joined us for £500 a week. He's on international duty now. He won't play in today's episode. I know. <laughs> Who, who could have seen this coming? Now, you will notice looking at our starting squad, there's a few new players here. There is one player with a blue name. That means he's in on loan. That means Zaya Holchuddy moved. Who did he move to? Middlesbrough. Yeah, I got less money than I could have got for him. £500,000, though, is still some really, really bloody good money, isn't it? I might be mistaken. I thought on the inbox item it said we got a profit of sell-on. I can't actually see it on the sale clauses we've currently got, so there might not be a profit of sell-on. But to be honest, to get £500,000 for this guy, it, it does feel like I've pulled off a robbery. I do feel like a criminal. Now, you will notice looking at the transfer screen here, few new transfers in. We'll talk about them shortly. Few transfers out, a couple of younger players going out on loan. There's one sale that's not here because the player's not left yet. However, and it's a pretty big however, Jasper Moon is on his way to Shrewsbury when the transfer window opens. I have negotiated to sell him to the League One side for £200,000 and we get a 50... I think it's a 50% profit of next sell-on. There's definitely a sell-on clause involved. Either way, we have him till January. He was causing a stink in the summer. £200,000 is mental. I've already got his replacement in. Now, I will level with you. I rushed to get the replacement in thinking, crap, I need a new starting centre-back, forgetting about the fact that he wouldn't leave us till the transfer window opened for the Football League sides. That said, here is Philip Lissa. This guy, English, formerly of Swansea, last year was on loan in League 2 and played a lot of games for York City. Prior to that, had a spell at Newport County as well. So a player who's played at the level above us consistently, 22 years old, 19 determination, somehow has 16 positioning but only 8 markings. I'm hoping the positioning is going to make up for things. He is inconsistent, but in spite of that, when you compare him with Jasper Moon, who's coming in to replace, I mean, let's be honest, he is just undoubtedly an upgrade. Yet to appear for the club makes his debut in today's first game. Alongside the likes of Shipston and Lissa, we have signed one other new player, slightly less exciting this one. Lewis Jones joins us as a backup goalkeeper. 28 years old, previously was playing for Donny. You can see here, was their starting goalkeeper, slowly got phased out of their team, was a free agent. Simkin is our starting goalkeeper. Finn was the backup, but at 19 years old, I didn't know if I could trust Finn. And given the fact we've got the money to go and find another goalkeeper, I just figured Lewis Jones was a bit of a no-brainer. Alongside Finn here, you can see they are similar players to one another. But I don't know. With the current injury situation with goalkeepers and football manager, I feel like you can never have too many. And uh, you know what? For what? £200 a week? It's good just to have a backup. Now, elsewhere, I am looking to loan out Talon. This is an ongoing loan deal. The plan is to loan him out to Chorley until the transfer window opens in January. Essentially, he goes out on loan. Jasper Moon takes up Talon's backup spot. And then when Moon leaves us in January, Talon comes back from his loan. 
that's how I imagine things are going to play out. So our total sales for this year sit currently at £825,000. That doesn't include the sale of Moon, which is another £200,000. We've made over a million pounds in sales. I can't stress this enough. That is insane for a team at this level. I don't think I've ever made so much money through sales in the National League in all the different Park to Prems we've done. Our bank balance now sits at £1.6 five million pounds our transfer budget's over a million pounds it's silly there's no one worth a million pounds that i can actually go out and sign so yeah for now i'm just kind of sat on my hands there is a temptation to maybe go and ask the board to improve the facilities this will probably cost over a million pounds to do but we kind of got the money to do it at the same time though i kind of want to avoid spending crazy money until we go pro which i'm hoping will happen next year upon promotion if we don't get promoted this summer and this year i'll probably just request to go pro anyway and hope it's granted speaking of board requests have had a couple granted a couple of our coaching staff getting coaching courses and elsewhere i requested to improve the youth recruitment and this was granted weeks ago the youth recruitment has not changed so i don't know what's going on there i've mentioned this in episode or two ago the fact that sometimes i request the youth recruitment to be updated and then it doesn't seem to update for ages maybe at some point it'll go above three and a half stars they they granted the request they said it was going to happen i'm just sat waiting so since last episode's triple header, we have played six games in the league. A bit of a mixed bag of results. We have already lost a game, so the dream of an unbeaten season, it's gone. We kicked things off with a win against Woking, 2-0 here. Bradley Edwards and Rio Shipston with the goals. Not a bad way for the Indian international to announce his arrival at the club. Goal on his debut. Yeah, he's on international duty now, so we won't see him today, but did well there. After that really good win, not such a good result. 1-0 defeat against Fylde. We had plenty of shots, but only one on target. Our finishing really let us down. And goal scoring wise, we've not been great in this game. That said, I do feel like it was a bit of a smash and grab by them. But sometimes that happens in Football Manager. And I don't know, we didn't really do enough to score. And you do need to score to win football matches. We did bounce back to kick off the month of September. A 1-0 win against Barrow. And Goma with the goal. After that, 1-1 against Boston, not a great result. Boston do have some very, very good players in their ranks. We were the better team in this game, and Boston are a team challenging for the playoff spot, so maybe not the worst result in the world. Nice to see Sam Pitt pick up man of the match and bag the goal in this game. In this match as well, I did make a bit of a tactical shift, and it was borne out of the fact that we'd really been struggling for goals for the previous couple of games. I decided to put the wing backs on attack. Yeah, we tried this years ago, and it didn't really work. Why not try it again after a few promotions? And with the wingbacks on attack, the goals returned at both ends of the pitch. This game here against Halifax was an absolute battle. They scored from the penalty spot. We had a goal via uh, a corner. We then took the lead in the game in the second half. They'd peg us back. Abbas came up with a really clutch goal. But yes, the decision to bring in the attacking wingbacks just born out of a lack of creativity going forward. In this game here, Slate did score as a result of that more attacking duty. And to be honest, I don't mind playing like this when we've got good centre-backs. I feel like years ago when we tried the attacking wing backs our biggest issue was our defense was our weakness we did not have great center backs whereas i kind of stressed it last year i think it's carried into this year even with the new additions we've brought in the defense is our strongest asset and whilst it maybe hasn't been on show in these previous two games um this game that was free to and the next game that was free to at least for now, I'm willing to persist with the attacking wing back experiment for today's games against Crawley and Chelmsford, two teams that we really should be winning against. So that previous game, we won via a last minute winner by Abbas. This game, a very different kind of 3-2. We were 3-0 up at half time. It was 3-2 in the second half. Um, and also at the end of the game, Slate got sent off in the 97th minute. So uh, yeah, this guy not available for today. Scored in the previous game got sent off in that one. Now, when you look at the form here, it does look a little bit patchy, but in spite of that, we are still sat tied at the top of the table with who would have thunk it? Rochdale. Yes, I kind of earmarked them as our big rivals this year. We are tied on 20 points apiece, but to be honest, the teams in the top nine are separated by five points. So it's very, very close here. There is only one unbeaten team left in the league. It is Fylde, who beat us, you might remember. Uh, they have drawn five games, mind you. At the other end of the table, for the Fleetwood fans out there, they've not won a game yet, but they have drawn three. So look, they might get a win soon. That said, they are still on minus seven points, which doesn't look great. 
So in terms of early thoughts on the season, have been a little bit disappointed by the form of Abbas and also Hamilton. Hamilton did score in our most recent game. It was his first goal of the season. Good to get that monkey off his back because it was becoming a bit of a thing. I'm hoping now he's going to get that confidence in and kick on. I have been rotating the team a fair amount. In previous years, I feel like we have had a pretty noticeable best 11. Whereas when you look at the team this year, and you can kind of tell this just looking at the star ratings... There's a lot of quality on the bench as well. I don't feel like there's this big separation between our 11 starting players and everyone else. As a result of that, I have been able to rotate things when players haven't played so well. And that's probably going to be a benefit today because we've got a couple of things to contend with. Slate is suspended. Shipston's on international duty. Bradley Edwards, who started the season phenomenally. Six assists, I believe all from open play as well for this guy, in eight games. He has the most assists in the entire league. He's on international duty with Wales. And elsewhere, Connor Coventry, who we brought in as a bit of a depth option, he's gone and got injured for two months. We signed him last episode. I was really happy with him as an addition. Got injured uh, in the game against Halifax. Still out for three to six weeks, which might not sound so bad. In the context of the month we've got coming up, he's probably going to miss about 10 matches. Right, this team is an absolute mess. Let, let me fix it real quick. So I think this is the starting 11 I'm going to go with. I'm going to stick with Hamilton and Abbas. They are two players who I took aside and had those chats with, you know, where you criticise players' forms. Since then, in the most recent two games, they have both got on the score sheet. So that's a big thumbs up there. Jasper Moon, who's been our long-term centre-back option, is going to play defensive mid in this game. I was tempted to play Gucci, but Moon probably is the better player. And even if he is leaving, and even if I have signed a centre-back replacement for him, he is going to feature in my squad this year. He is going to be a squad option for the next few months until he departs and we might as well make use of him here um, given the fact that like I've already mentioned and I'll mention it again Shipston is just away on international duty I don't know how often India play international football matches this could be a problem I just realized we're playing away against Crawley we've not done the away day yet Crawley's not the most glamorous place to go to I'm going to put on my wellies, be brave. Maybe a hazmat suit will be necessary. We'll go do an away day. So for today's away day, we are heading to Creepy Crawley. Yeah, this is a place I actually live not too far away from. It's not as bad as people make it out to be. I do want to just start off the away day by giving a little nod to Free Bridges FC. We managed them a few years ago in Park to Prem. Here is Free Bridges. If you're wondering how close are they to Crawley Town, the answer is literally down the road. Here is Broadfield Stadium. I don't want to give them too much praise. The car park actually looks quite good. Okay, in terms of street view, we can go into the car park. There is one dot of the stadium itself. We'll start with a little bit of a peek at the stadium, which I have actually been to on a few occasions. Uh, Brighton's women's team uh, play at the ground or did play at the ground. I don't know if they still do. Maybe they do. Um, answers on a postcard, I don't know. I will say, though, it's quite cute, isn't it, with the red and white? like that. They've really committed to their team's colour scheme, and that I can respect. Apparently, the away turnstiles are here. This doesn't feel as welcoming, does it, this away bit? This feels like a dodgy corner where you might get mugged. As for the dot in the stadium, shout out to Colin Roberts, the one man brave enough to submit a photosphere of Crawley's football ground to Google. Here it is in all its glory. I will say it is actually quite a cute non-league stadium, isn't it? It's, it's quite cosy. Uh, that's never a word that's been used to describe anything related to Crawley before. It is quite cosy. Not great seat art, if we're being honest. I don't know how I feel about the fact that all the posh seats are black. I bet they're all padded and cushiony. Give everyone cushion. Look how uncomfy these seats look. Also, is that rain? Then the stadium might be flooding. The Broadfield Stadium, inoffensive. Also, I've just noticed Emma Hayes is their manager. Emma Hayes and I are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I can't wait to beat her. This is going to be big. Um, they have a capacity of 6,000. It's a cute stadium. It looks quite nice in this picture. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. No, I can't. That's too high. I've been too generous with my scores lately. 6 out of 10. Car park was good. Lack of footage inside. Inoffensive, cosy, Crawley. I will say if the tourist board of Crawley want to use the terms inoffensive, cosy, Crawley in a marketing campaign, they do have my permission. I feel like no one's ever sold Crawley better. Okay, this is the first of two games today. Why is the match so dark? Also, what's happened? Moon. 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 I paid. I mean, he's not our player, so I guess it's fine. We've already got the money. Jasper Moon's been sent off after a minute and a half. I thought I could trust him. I thought, I mean, he's leaving the club for £200,000 in a few months, so he's not really our problem to worry about, but I thought, yeah, we'll still use him as, as a squad player. This is fine. It's not bloody fine. He's been sent off immediately. You know what? The wing-back's on attack, yet yeah, you, guys, you guys can go and defend now, and we're not going to look for the overlaps anymore. Hold Chuddy 
you are going to have to be a little defensive demon for us. I think I'm going to play him as a ball winning midfielder. I don't know if I like this setup for our team, but we're down a man for the rest of the match, so it'll do. This was supposed to be the banker. This was supposed to be the game we could not lose. And instead, inside 90 seconds, we've lost our defensive midfielder. We've managed to adapt nicely without having to make a sub. I also appreciate my tactical changes haven't gone through here and we're on the attack. If we want to score now and then just defend for the next however long, that works. Hold Chuddy's about to become a defensive midfielder. Ricky D, what can you do? Crosses it in. I mean, we're attacking here despite being a man down. Do I need a defensive midfielder against them? I feel like at least initially we probably should do the changes I've done. But watching this game play out now, I'm sat thinking maybe maybe we do stay on the attack. Maybe I do just keep the wing backs on support. You know what? I am actually going to put the wing backs on support. Uh, that highlight there, that just gave me hope. I can't believe it though. Football manager is scripted, isn't it? What are the odds that Jasper Moon, after I've sold him in the midweek for £200,000, goes and does that? Like, that is actually mental. Football, the game knows. The game knows. I feel like we should put more of a spotlight on Lissa here. He's the new signing. He's thrown in at the deep end here. Ten men for 90 minutes. He joined us only midweek, so he maybe have a bit of rust to shake off as well. He is a player who has some decent passing ability. Well, at least for our team, relatively speaking. That's a great ball through. Abbas, through the centre. We've scored. It's 1-0. I don't know how. I mean, I do know how Ricky D. The D in his name stands for distributor. Yeah, he works as a courier midweek when he's not playing football. What a ball that is to Abbas. What a delivery. What a finish. If we win with 10 men, this would be a massive result. Okay, Ricky D, can you do some more delivering? Can, can he, you know, he's like Santa. He, he's got his bag full of parcels. He's going to put loads of balls through the defence. And Goma, give it, give it to the delivery man. Give it to him. Listen, I, I was hoping he was going to play it to Ricky D there. Instead, he goes back to Welch and Goma. I feel like I've gone too far with the whole delivery thing and courier thing, but we're in deep now. Stuart, what can you do to the byline? He's seen his opposite fullback put a ball in, and now he's put a ball in, and Norman Halton scored. Both our strikers in terrible form have both found the back of the net. Stuart here looks a bit lost, doesn't he? It doesn't look like he knows what he's doing, but then he just whips out a ball of quality. Three Crawley players go for it, including the keeper. None of them get it. There's another highlight here. Oh my god, whole Chuddy's now got sent off, hasn't he? I mean, what a game to pick for the live commentary. This is definitely a red. There's a man dead on the pitch. Hey, whole Chuddy, you dingus. We have nine men. What do you do with nine men? What do, what do you do with nine men? I feel like I do have to just stay with one striker. So Abbas, you can stay up top. Gucci, you're now going to play as the ball winning midfielder. If this man gets sent off, it's the most ridiculous chain of events ever. Anyone who plays defensive mid gets a red card for us. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Gucci, play as a centre mid on defend in the, the kind of heart of the defence here. And we're going to play with the wing backs on defend. I think that's the plan. We are 2 0 up against Crawley here. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to hold on for it. We've got nine men for the next 45 minutes. I'm going to tell the players I'm pleased. I might as well get them a rail high. I don't know why A Hole Chuddy's appearing very happy. Jasper Moon understands the situation. Why are you grinning about, son? What's so funny? I mean, imagine if we score another now. Maybe we're better with less players. Maybe the logic is that we should get a sending off every game. You know, we're going that, with that mentality of the, the world is against us. You know, it's biased refereeing. And we'll use that as our fuel when we do have the ball. Ricky D, make magic happen. Imagine if we were to win this like 3-0 with nine men. It'd be, it'd be silly. It'd be a ridiculous result. I feel like I am getting a tad carried away here. Um, there is still a lot of football left to be played. Over 40 minutes left of this game. And I'm talking about scoring another with nine men, as opposed to thinking about how we might want to defend. They've got so many players going forward here. Gordon, edge of the box, Traore, Daly or Daly scores. Gucci, Gucci, just I'm gonna have to put him back. Don't get sent off though. I mean, to be fair to Crawley, this is a nicely worked goal. But then again, they've got so much space because there's no defensive mid and there's only nine players on the pitch for us. I do feel like a more defensive mid there might have picked up Traore. That's why I've made the change. My concern here is with this new shape with the wing backs on defend that we're not gonna be able to do anything when we have the ball whatsoever. The temptation to put the wing backs on support is very real, but. They are playing this 4-2-3-1 with wing backs and kind of wide midfielders. I feel like that's going to cause some issues. They've hit the crossbar. I mean, I'm just sat here thinking, what can I realistically do in this situation? Uh, th this doesn't happen very often, does it, in Football Manager? You never plan for when you're only going to have nine players on the pitch. I also realise I'm running out of players that can actually play defensive midfielder. 
Can any of my centre backs play defensive mid? I don't think I don't think they can. See, I was thinking about potentially playing with two defensive mids and then just having Ngoma play off Abbas, just have these two as kind of two attacking players. I I might live to regret this. I think the most logical thing to do at this point, actually is to bring on another defender. Bitumba, uh, you are making your debut today. You are going to be playing right centre-back. Good luck, Godspeed. I think, and I, I don't know if this is wise, I'm going to play Ricky D and Stewart as wing-backs and then play a back three with Gucci just in the middle as a deep-line playmaker. We've got to try and do something, but yeah, I mean, this is this is just a silly game, isn't it, really? And Goma doesn't even have any knowledge of defensive mid. I was wondering if maybe I pull him back. Do I, do I go with this? Or, or this? Maybe, maybe this. In case you can't tell at this point, uh, I am operating purely off vibes, but I feel like that maybe that's the correct way to approach things here. I've already made two subs. I have got one sub in my back pocket. Even a draw at this point, I feel like would be quite a good result. I feel like with 10 men, it was a winnable game. With nine men, it's become a whole lot harder. I can't believe that A-Hole Chitty and Moon have both been sent off. The two players I've sold since you were last here just both stabbing me in the back because I've kept them around. Ajala scored for them. It's 2-2. Two, two. I'm losing my head. I feel like the most annoying thing here is the fact they've scored from a cross into the box. We've got so many players back, so many centre-backs on the pitch, we can't win a header. I'm fuming. Now, I do realise some people are going to comment on the mentality and the fact I kept it on attacking. The best way to think of mentality, in my opinion, is a risk factor. If you have players on the defend kind of instruction, even if you're on attack, they're not going to get super far forward super often. So with how we were lined up, it wasn't actually that well devastating. That said, I have now gone to balanced. I, I you know, I've I've decided a draw might be enough. Maybe. I mean, the issue here is we've not had a shot, I don't think, in the second half. We've certainly not had a shot on target since we scored. We'd only had two shots on target when we scored two. And here we find ourselves with 13 minutes left. And Gucci just giving the ball away like an absolute moron. Ajala's through. Ajala squares it. Daily scores. It's it's, it's peak football manager, isn't it? I'm not having fun. I mean, on the flip side, now that we're losing this game, I can just gamble, can't I? At this point now, this is where we can now just throw players forward if we so wish. Um, yeah, Batumba I've brought on. I'm very tempted just to take him off. But you know what? Welch has actually been worse in this game. Uh, I have no plan here, by the way. If, if you're wondering, what are you doing? No, I don't know either. I bet in the history of Football Manager, no one has ever played this formation. I don't think it's happened. We're playing a 4-1-2-1. Yeah, it's like a really stretched diamond midfield with a striker leading the way. Stewart kicks out. There's no one there. We don't have any players forward because I've got no players on the pitch. They've scored again. I just want to leave this game. The worst thing of all is I think our next game is only in a few days' time. And so these players are going to be suspended. And all the players who are already missing for this game, I don't think are going to be back from international duty and such. I'm not having fun. I mean, I feel bad for Lissa. He's made his debut at centre-back today. He, it's not his fault, is it? It's just not his fault. I feel like there's games every park to Prem that go down in infamy in any Football Manager series. This will be one such game. The bottling at Crawley. 2-0 up. Two sendings off. Lost 4-2. I don't even feel like it's really my fault, if I'm being honest, but it's football manager, innit? I'm throwing a water bottle. Far from please. Stressed, lost confidence, lack of belief. Don't give a Scooby-Doo, you're all dinguses. I mean, if we want to look for a silver lining, Rochdale did win, but in spite of that, we are still in fourth, and one win, we could go above them. If you're wondering, when do you play Rochdale and Sully Hall? Glad you asked. We play the teams currently first and second in back-to-back -back games midway through next month. Yeah, I wonder if you can guess what matches we're coming back for next episode. Adam Abbas has told us how manager what the space lost his temper. Can you bloody blame me? Okay, good news. I was mistaken about the Chelmsford game. We've got a week until the Chelmsford game. Then the Worldstone game is midweek after that. We, we don't need to worry about for that for the episode. Chelmsford, by the way, media prediction of 22nd, currently 12th. They've won their most recent game. I was hoping for a nice, easy game. They're actually looking okay. I mean, saying all of that, Crawley was meant to be the easier game. To be fair, their media prediction is third, so maybe I'm just really underselling Crawley, but they were right down there in the bottom half of the table. Right, I'm going to go take a meditation session. I'll join you in a week. Chelmsford at home, Butlin Road, we need a win. So whilst we might be without two of our better players in Hull, Chuddy and Moon for this next game, let's look at the positives. The under-18s playing in the under-18s Division 1 Southwest. Yes, yeah, Southwest. I know where we are in the country. Top of the league. Eight games played, eight wins, 24 points. We're going up. I actually don't know if you get promoted to the under 
18's Divisions 2. I think this is to do with where you are in the Football League. I don't think the youth team can get promoted. I don't know. Can the youth team get promoted? Group stage, and then it goes to another stage. There's nothing here about promotion. It's a mystery. Either way, the under-18s are doing great. They're unbeaten. And whilst we're not exactly flawless, let's be honest... It's far from disastrous. Like, there is a lot of spots in the playoffs, the six places for playoffs, and we're only three points away from Rochdale. Um, <laughs> so much this season. That I'm getting very worked up about nothing. I thought I'd calm down after the Crawley Town game. I haven't calmed down. So for this game, we are returning to our backyard. Some good news. Edwards is back from playing from Wales. So, uh, yeah, he here. Uh, Pritchard, sorry, back to the bench you go. Elsewhere, uh, still on international duty, or is he? No, no, he's not on international duty. He's come back today, Shipston. He's very, very tired, though. Uh, yeah, I can't play him. He's literally played yesterday, I think. When did India play their last game? The 1st of October. Yeah, he played yesterday against Malaysia. I mean, to be fair, fair play to him. Less than 24 hours later, he's back at the football club. That deserves some respect. Uh, the rest of the team looks a little bit makeshift. Uh, Gucci comes in for whole chitty. Freckleton, who I thought we kind of got rid of. In fact, I was looking at selling him at one point, given the fact I didn't think we'd need him. He's now back at defensive mid. Uh, welcome back, Miguel. As for the defence, Slate is alongside Welch, Lissa, Ricky D, Simkin in goal. Let's hope there were more discipline than the last game. Okay, corner on this near side, and Goma over it, whipping it in. It's half-headed away. Welch, though, to Edwards, to Hamilton, who scores his third of the year. Bradley Edwards wasn't around for the last game. He's around today. That is another assist. If I'm not mistaken, that takes his tally up to seven for the year, and I'll appreciate. It's not the most flashy or sexy of assists, but it's another one for the scrapbook. The finish by Hamilton, very, very nice there. Just on the topic of Hamilton as well, I am in the process of offering him a new contract. He's currently on £30 a week. I appreciate that's probably a bit unfair on him. So I think we're paying him around £350-£400 a week as part of a new deal that is yet to kick in because he's not officially accepted it, although he's accepted it and walked away with the deal. Hopefully that's going to come through and hopefully he's going to reward us with that new contract. He's on for a hat-trick. That was gifted to him, though. After the Crawley game, if this goal had been scored against me, uh, I can't promise I would have held my nerve. What has happened there? I'm not going to complain. When it goes in your favour, it's great. It's 2-0, less than 10 minutes in, there's another highlight. Hamilton's on for a hat-trick. We've not made enough of that. Keep an eye on him. He's in the middle, he's lurking away. Slate has the ball as well. Edge of the box, could give it to Hamilton, could put it in. Goes for a wiggle, and Goma, Gucci, shoots. It's in the back of the net. It's 3-0, it's the ninth minute. Where was this performance last game? I'll tell you where it was. It was off on the moon, wasn't it? It wasn't even in this galaxy. The moon is in this galaxy. That's not the point. It's 3-0. I still hate moon. I do appreciate it. It's just a case of three shots, three goals. We've been very clinical. But that's all you can do. I will say, we're coming up to half an hour played here. Chelmsford yet to have a shot on target. We are looking very, very solid at the back. It's now with Ricky D. Is he going to do some more delivering? He's on the far side. He's whipping it in. Hamilton is under it. Cleared away, but Slate is on attack. And Slate, he's on the attack. He's on the score sheet. It's four. There's just something quite exciting, isn't there, about the wing backs on attack. You go from one wing back to the other. Side to side, coast to coast, and... Well, I don't know if the keeper could have done better there. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not sure if there could be more of a contrast in performances. We're 4-0 up here. Halftime is approaching. And all I can really do is sing and shout the praises of our players. Yes, we took our first three shots, but we've created a ton and they have created nothing. I feel like it's a good sight, isn't it, in Football Manager where there's just a sea of green ratings across, well, the vast majority of the starting eleven. I always feel like in a game like this, it's hard for the defenders to get good ratings because they've got no defending to do. Okay, I have made some subs here. Pitts and Pritchard on. Gucci's moved back to centre defensive mid. Uh, Freckleton's gone off. So has Abbas. Just a little bit of rotation going Going on in this game. It's 4-0. We might as well give a few of our younger players who need game time to develop that game time to develop. Even if Chelmsford go forward and score here, I'm not going to flinch. Uh, you know, I feel like I've recovered now from the Crawley game. In many ways, if they want to score here so I don't have to pay out clean sheet bonuses, that would be very kind of them. Pritchard, not doing great defensively here. They're through. Oh my god, it's deflected off Lissa into the back of the net. I mean, in his first game of his live commentary debut, he conceded four. He's now scored an own goal. What do you say about this? I mean, <laughs> it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. No clean sheet bonus to pay out. That's, a, that's good. 
Welch with the ball. I mean, we've not scored in this second half. Should I be worried? I mean, we've taken our foot off the gas, although, you know what? I feel like we can afford to do that somewhat in this kind of game. And Goma, Slate, he's been involved in everything we do. The left back dinks it, Pitt. Really should have got his header on target. Three minutes of added time at the end of this game. A little bit disappointing that we slowed down in the second half, but 4-0 up after half an hour. The job was done early, and in fact, we scored every goal in this game. Technically. With how tight the league is, goal difference could make a factor come the end of the year, so a result like that is never a bad thing. And in fact, looking at the league table around us, a few of the teams immediately in our vicinity slipped up. Sadly, Rochdale did manage to win, but looking at things here, Solihull and Fylde both dropped points. And with how tight the league is, suddenly they're down in 6th and 7th. Norman Hamilton, man of the match. We will give him a little quick chat, praise his performance. He was very, very good in this one. And I am very much going to hope he keeps that run of form going when we come back for our next games. We are going to be taking on Sully Hull and Rochdale. You might have noticed here a game against Bath has just been shoved in between. Uh, that was rescheduled due to the FA Cup. Next episode is going to be a very big one. Rochdale and Sully Hull are two of the better teams towards the top of the table. Two games that are definitely not guaranteed wins and two games that if we fail to win, suddenly we could find ourselves outside the playoffs. We knew this season was going to be a really fiercely competitive league. We knew there was plenty of quality in this division. Rochdale have now moved up to favourites for promotion. And, well, we predicted a battle pre-season. The battle is very much on. Next episode, we've got a couple of really, really big games. I hope you're excited for them. Let me know what you make of the whole chuddy sale. I mean, I say that like I had a choice. Ultimately, the board accepted it. But I think we can all universally agree he's not worth £500,000. Like the video if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It is me, Jack, and I'm out.